<laughs> All right, sorry about that. Amen. I will show you mercy for Jonathan's sake. I will show you kindness for thy father's sake. And I will restore thee all. You see, every resurrection story ends with restoration. That is the complete story. If there is no restoration, the resurrection story is incomplete. You see, I will restore for Jonathan's sake thy father, I will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself down and said, What is thy servant that thou shalt look upon such a dead dog as me? Born a prince, yet he refers to himself as a dog born a prince but he sees himself life has so beaten him to the point where he sees himself not even as a living dog but a dead dog a dead dog this was a prince the one of the first generations of kings in Israel. What such a beautiful destiny cut short. And you will see why quickly. Second Kings chapter four, verse four. And Jonathan's son had and Jonathan saw son had a son that was lame on his feet. He was five years old when the tiding came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass that she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame on both feet. And his name was Mephibosheth. The twisted, mangled, broken life was as a result of an accident that happened somewhere in the story of this man's life that has been forgotten by many. So all they know and all we see at this point is a grown man who can, who is useless, who is a drug addict, who is not willing to do anything to help himself. You know what I mean? How we, we just look at them because we don't know where he's coming from. We see him and we see today because we never saw the yesterday. And so we prejudge, we conclude, we condemn, we relegate them, we despise them because all we know is now. We didn't see their yesterday. And Resurrection Sunday, which I call the Freedom Sunday, is for men and women like that. And I said, until the Resurrection Sunday becomes for me a Restoration Sunday, it will just be a religious activity. Until I can say, free at last, as a child of God, because of the Resurrection Sunday, then I have not yet experience it. If I can say free at last, as a child of God by the reason of this day, then all I come on Sunday morning like this to celebrate is another activity, another event. Because until I encounter the person behind the activity, behind the event, it is the encounter that changes the story of a man's life. An encounter of the God kind. Meshiboshed was relegated to the back street of life for so many years. But it took one encounter with a king to change his story. David, like we would say, a picture of Christ in a way, look at him. He was, 
he experienced some form of resurrection and restoration in his own life. But he knew that the story is never going to be complete until he extends that same power and pulls somebody out of the pit like himself. He has not done anything yet. We are saved to save. We were rescued to rescue. Paul said so in Philippians chapter 3. He said, I follow after so that I may apprehend that for which I have been apprehended for in Christ Jesus. You were not apprehended to just come onto a church building and look beautiful on a Sunday morning. That is nice also, but it is more than that. You were not rescued to just keep looking pretty every day and looking down your nose on the rest of us. You were rescued so that you can rescue others. You were enthroned so that you can enthrone others. You were lifted so that you can lift others up. You were delivered so that you can deliver others. This is what resurrection is all about. So the resurrection story is not an activity or just an event. It's a person. In John chapter 11, he said so, verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet will he live again. He said the resurrection that I came to offer, that even the dead like Meshibosheth relegated to the back street of life can be rescued and be given life again. Paul described him who understood him so well. He said when he ascended on high he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. He took the one, it was a picture that he uses when the Roman and soldiers of old, every time they go and plunder another nation, you know, both the, 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 the people that were captured and their goods are paraded through the cities of Rome with all the gifts and the plunder and just showing the power and the might of the Roman army and everything. And so Paul was trying to give us a picture that when he ascended the resurrection power, he led captivity captive. The one who had us bound in deprivation, in obscurity, in pain and disease and sickness. He, he made a public show of them. And then began to give gifts to those who were once held bound by the same power of captivity. He said he has come. In, he said every written code that was against us, he took it and nailed it to the cross. He came to show us. Like David to Meshibosheth, a resurrection story. His victory over death and over the grave is your victory and my victory. It is not something for us to sing about alone. It's not something to just preach on. It is something to be experienced by you and me. This is what he says. This is what he wants. This is what we should desire as God's people. John 14, 3 said, If I go, I prepare a place for you. For where I am, there you will be with me also. So he came that through the resurrection power, we can be lifted out of darkness into his marvelous light, says the scripture. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 16, he said, The people who sat in darkness, a great light has come. When I read the story of 2 Kings chapter 9, 
And I related to the resurrection. You see, Resurrection Sunday, what has been, as I've been meditating on it over the weekend, that for the first time it dawns on me again and reemphasize it. You see, Resurrection Sunday story came to reaffirm to me and to reassure me and to let me know that freedom is possible. Because grave is the final bus stop. When something is buried, you forget about it. Am I right? <laughs> you know, the interesting thing about the dead and the funeral and the grave is this. You love this friend of yours so much and, and he died or she died and you were crying and you were grieving even at the funeral and the body is lying in state and, and some people, oh, this husband of mine, this wife of mine, I want to be buried. I want to die with them also. You know, you know how we get emotional. No, I can't live without them. And you are holding on to the casket. You want to be buried with them. And that is the emotion. And everybody is holding you. And they are pleading with you and say, no, 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 no. Everything's going to be all right. And then you go to the cemetery and, and you're trying to jump into the grave with a casket, right? And they're holding you back. But I know that any time, if anybody there leaves you, you're not going to jump. Amen. All right? So everybody just plays along with you. That, okay, they keep holding you back so that you don't jump into the casket. But actually, you were not going to jump. But the thing is this. that you go through that motion, broken and battered emotionally, truly, and then you leave the cemetery, and 20 minutes later, you are eating. Right? You are eating. You know why? It's not because you don't love them. It's not because you don't miss them. It's not because you're not hurting. Because you know that once that casket touches the ground and that thing is closed, it is over. There's nothing you can do about it anymore. Nothing anymore. This is what the grave means. So when Jesus busted out of that grave that Sunday morning, he just came to prove to you that no amount of power can hold you bound unless by your permission that freedom is possible in Christ. I need to know that. It was not just, uh, he wasn't just putting up a show. He was sending a message through the ages and the stages of time that every time you come across this story, remember that freedom is possible. Psalm 49, 15 says, But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. Isaiah 13, 14 said, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. And that is what Jesus demonstrated. So the resurrection Sunday came to remind you and to assure you that you don't have to stay lost and forgotten forever. And this was Meshibosheth or were, were as broken as it is. And, and, and you may be broken and you may be relegated to the back street of life due to the incidents and experience of yesterday. And then nobody wants to have anything to do with you. Please, child of God, no matter how broken you are, no matter how relegated to the back street of life that you feel right now it is not even enough for you to give up. In Christ nobody is forgotten. In Christ nobody is a non-entity. In Christ nobody is useless. This is what Resurrection Sunday means. And Jesus even before he went there in Luke chapter 19 verse 10 he said what? The son of man came to do one thing. What? To seek the one who what? Lost. The forgotten. The abandoned. The rejected. The forsaken. Life has a way of making you feel sorry for yourself, 
and for the things that people did to you. Amen. And this has been one of my great passion in the last couple of months as we started this Bible study. And I realized there are many people in life who are victims not out of their own making, but they have been so beaten by bullies in life that they are now taking responsibility even for the things done to them by other people. And they lose their voice. Men and women with great destinies and potentials being relegated to the background and the back street of life, forgotten to a place Low Deba means a place of no communication. And you know we've been saying it, I've been saying it to you time and time again. A voice simply means any sound with authority and with power. When a man or woman loses his or her voice, they've lost their power and their right to express themselves and to pursue their dream and their vision through the issues of yesterday. Like Meshibosheth, he wasn't the one... Somebody dropped him. He didn't just become a drug addict out of fun. Can we just go there a little bit? Huh? She didn't become a prostitute on the street because she was desperate for money. Somebody dropped her an uncle. Uh, uh, our father walked into the room at one o'clock in the morning while everybody else was sleeping at the age of 11 and suddenly a Pandora bus of pain was opened. But all we see is 30 years later the callousness, the, the anger and the bitterness and, and, and uh, how can she be so, so full of herself? How can she be so uptight? How can he be so mean? But we were not there when they dropped them. And let me tell you, if you are feeling like Meshibosheth this morning, it is a reason for that. Because I realize that the enemy does not go after empty people. I'll say that again. The devil does not go after empty people. If you are under attack, if life has not dealt you a fair deal, child of God, there is a reason for it. If you have been going through struggles and pain, and it's as if all hell has been just let loose on you from the first day you shouted when you came into this world, it's because you were carrying something. Because the enemy does not go after empty containers. If you are under attack, it's an indication of what you are carrying. You know why? Listen to me. Paul said something. He said, no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, right? No eyes have seen, no ears have heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of men. What God has prepared for those who love him, but he has revealed it unto them by the Spirit. So the enemy does not know the exact thing you are carrying. But because you are marked by the blood of Christ, so he, he begins to shoot blank shot. So he would try sexual abuse if that doesn't work. And he's going to try that. He's going to try this. All he's trying to do is to get you never to step into the purpose, your kingship. That you were born to reign and to rule. So he's going to do everything within his power to stop that from becoming a reality. Do you know the name Meshibosheb sounded so twisted and broken, but in the midst of that twisted, broken life was a prophetic word hanging over that name. The meaning of his name means an exterminator of shame. <laughs> That is to say, whatever shame 
and reproach his father and grandfather may have suffered. He was born for such a time as that to take away that shame. And the enemy said, not on my watch. Can you see where we're going now? Not on my watch. You will not. That shame has come. That stigma has come to stay. That pattern of divorce in your family, you're not going to break that cycle. Not on my watch. That pattern of iniquity and illegitimacy in your family is going to stay. You can't do nothing about it. Not on my watch. So anytime you stand up to pray, he hits you bad. Anytime you try to, to pant after God like the dead pants after the water broke, he puts something in your way to make you get discouraged and stop pursuing God. Because he knows that the moment you let... Because the moment you know whose you are and who you are, he loses his power over you. Thank you, sister. And he's going to do everything. To make sure you get angry. Because the place that will bring you liberty and bring you close to God is in the fellowship of the brethren. Why is it so easy to get angry with church folks than your co-workers? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Why do you find it easy to forgive your drunken co-workers at work and you can't forgive that elder in the church that they didn't even do half of what <laughs> I'll leave it there for you to think about because anything to keep you away from being the exterminator of shame and reproach in your family he's going to throw that dart at you child of God Because in the midst of your brokenness, in the midst of your twisted life, there is still a word over your life, child of God. Yeah. In the midst of the pain that you're going through, in the midst of the abandonment, the abandonment that you feel right now, yes, they have abandoned you. Yes, they dropped you. But God has not dropped you yet. This is what Resurrection Sunday came to remind you. Yes, you were abused. And that abuse has turned you into a sexual pervert. But God has not abandoned you yet. And after the resurrection Sunday morning, he's sitting on his throne and he said, Is there anyone yet? <laughs> huh? Is there anyone? Is there anyone, is there any broken, battered soul that I should show kindness to? I'm not going to, I didn't ascend into the sky. I didn't ascend and I'm not seated at the right hand of the Father just to look pretty. I'm seated there so that you can be seated with me. This is the story. The Bible says we are all joined here with Christ Jesus. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And so David said, as a picture of the resurrection Sunday, I'm not going to sit on the throne alone. The one who thinks is a dog by reason of the abandonment and the frustrations of life, I still want to heal you. This is what resurrection Sunday means. Isaiah 54, verse 4 says, Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed. This was a prophetic word that Meshibosheth was supposed to rise above and walk in so that his name and the legacy of his father and the fathers before him can be restored through him. And the enemy said, Not on my watch. And so right from when he was a little bitty baby, they dropped him. You know, Jesus said the same story. In Matthew 13. You remember the story? And I remind you a little bit quickly here. Because somebody needs to hear something here this morning. And Jesus was talking and giving a parable. And he said, the kingdom of God is likened into, unto a garden that a man uh, planted good seed. Right? And went to sleep. 
Remember that parable? And he said, when the man, the gardener went to sleep, the enemy came and did what? And planted. Because everything responds to sowing and reaping. That is life. Whatever you sow, thou shall you also reap. He, he was watching. You see, listen, the enemy is crafty. He's going about like a rolling. Because until you understand what happens in the realm or the spirit, you just, you, 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 you are angry and frustrated with the wrong person. God. <laughs> you know, you blame God for why was he there? Why didn't he do this? No, 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 no. The enemy has a way is a copycat. Listen to this. Jesus said, the man came, this beautiful destiny, and planted good seed. Right? So he was watching behind. And so when the man went to sleep, what did he do? He came and what? Copied the same pattern. Planted. Right? But this time, he, because if he comes to you with a, with a pitchfork and a horn, you will not fall for him. Please. The devil doesn't look like that. If the devil looks like that, all of us will be going to heaven anyhow. Because nobody will fall for that joker. You understand what I'm saying? So he doesn't come like that. He comes like he... He looks like you and me. He talks better than you and me. So he came and planted. And so because why? Somebody went to sleep on the job. The one who was supposed to be watching the garden went to sleep. Somebody went to sleep over Meshibosheth. They dropped him. And so suddenly, this garden, and everybody began to say, but what happened to this child? He came from a good Christian home. His father is a pastor. The mother is a prayer warrior. What went wrong? And Jesus said what? When men slept. You can sleep through anger, through carelessness, through bitterness of heart. And abandon your responsibility. Instead of nurturing the destiny that God has committed into our hand. But child of God, all hope is not lost. This is why Resurrection Sunday happened. That when men slept, somebody woke up on our behalf. And I said, you may have been dropped, but have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The thief came to steal and to destroy. But Resurrection Sunday came to restore back what the enemy stole. The carelessness of my father will no longer be held against me. The carelessness of my teacher will no longer be an indictment against me. The carelessness of that uncle will no longer be used against me by the enemy. If only I will reach out to the power of the resurrected Christ. This is what resurrection is all about. It's to give you a new beginning. Those, the people in darkness have seen a great light. May Shibosheth. God is calling you to that banquet table of honor and restoration again. This is what Resurrection Sunday is to me. He's saying, come out from the place of obscurity, of guilt, of shame, rejection, low self-esteem. I know you were dropped. Why didn't I catch you before you got down? I don't have an explanation for that. Maybe when you get over there, he will tell you why. He allowed you to get down before he picks you up today. But one thing I know, that all things does work together 
for the good of them that love him and are called according to his purpose. Your brokenness today, child of God, if you give it to him, he's going to share it, he's going to mangle it together, he's going to make something beautiful out of that brokenness. Your broken life will become a masterpiece in his hand that from you, many will begin to feed off. People like David could understand what it means to be dropped. That's why when he rose up, he said, no, I can't leave you down there. God is saying, you were dropped because there are a lot of, you're going to meet a lot of broken people like you. And because you cannot heal what you cannot relate to. This is my answer. It may not be the complete answer. <laughs> Amen. God, I believe, the reason why you were dropped wasn't because God hates you. It wasn't because God was asleep. It wasn't because God didn't love you enough. It wasn't because God could not stop that man from walking into that room at 12 midnight. It wasn't because God could not stop that drunken driver from running over your parents. It has nothing to do with the, 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 the meanness in the hearts of God. It is something that I and you cannot be able to comprehend in this side or on this side of heaven. But one thing I don't know, that if you give that broken pieces of your life back to him, he is going to use it to his glory and to his honor because only you can relate to another broken person with compassion you become a broken bread your ugliness becomes something beautiful so when you tell a, 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 a young lady that has a child out of wedlock that it's okay, I understand. You are not just reciting a seven-step psychological book. You are speaking from the womb of your spirit because you have been there. When you hug them, you don't hug them out of lust. You hug them out of love and compassion. Without saying a word, they will know that here is a man or woman who is touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Resurrection Sunday is a David story, is a Meshibosheth story. And you can choose what part you want to play this morning as we pray. If you have been rescued and you are seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places this morning, why don't you reach out for a Meshibosheth? on your street, in your family. If you're a Meshibosheth this morning and you feel abandoned, rejected, and relegated to the back street of life because of the experience of yesterday, why don't you look up? There is a David looking for you. He rose from the grave over 2,000 years ago and he's saying, I see you. I'm calling for you. Don't let the definition of man stigmatize you from answering that call. Meshibosheth said, I'm a dead dog because that is what men called him in the place of no communication. What are they calling you that makes you think that you are no longer wanted in the palace of freedom? redemption and restoration what name is the word calling you today that makes you think you are counted out of those who should be sitting with a king and God is saying I don't care what you call yourself what I see is that you have been marked to restore and I will restore you so that you can restore others child of God there is still hope Resurrection Sunday came to speak to your hope this morning. He came to say to you, no grave, no dead, no situation can hold you bound unless by your permission. If you can look up this morning, your David is calling for you. And he's not going to sit down until you come. Shall we stand up this morning?
this is why we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. This is why we sing the way we sing. This is why we can say Jesus paid it all. This is why we go to church. We don't go to church because we, 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 we want to be among our friends. That's part of it. You know, the fancy building. Like all the things they say about us. We are all that. But more than all the hypocrisy of us, the one thing we know is that we serve a risen Christ. The reason why we still come and still carry the label of Christianity without shame, without apology, is because we were once Meshibosheth and he brought us into that banquet table. You may not like the way we do things. We are sorry, but we will never apologize for our redemption. And we offer you the same grace this morning, child of God. He came into the palace a dead dog. But he was still invited to the table anyway. And so if you think the church is not perfect, you are right. You're not far from the truth. But the master loves us. But we know when it's all over, we're going to be a perfect bride before him, before that trumpet sound that day. Why don't you join us? That together with our brokenness, he can mend us all together. He doesn't want anyone left behind. And this is what Resurrection Sunday is all about. Do not be left behind. He's calling you. And if there's anybody here this morning also, if you've not answered the call of the King's Man Redeemer, of your own resurrected David, this is the time to say, here I am. I may be like a dead dog, but I thank you, Jesus, that you don't see me that way. Thank you, Lord, that in the midst of my broken, twisted life, there is a word of deliverance hanging over me. And I lay hold of that word this morning. Save me, Master Jesus. And that's all you need to say this morning. It's not a fancy prayer. It's a cry of a desperate man in low Deborah, a place of no communication, a place of no pasture, a place of no fruitfulness. And suddenly he heard the voice saying, come, come to the palace. And I can hear that voice calling somebody this morning saying, come, come unto me, everyone that is heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Aren't you tired of living without a voice? Aren't you tired of living below the average spiritually, emotionally? There is a better place in the palace. And the doors to the palace, the gates to the palace is open this morning. That is what the gates, that is what the open grace signifies. That suddenly the doors to victory is open. The doors to freedom is open. Who will walk into it this morning? If you need a retouch, just pray wherever you're standing this morning. For those of you at home, all you need to say, Jesus. I've gone astray for too long. I want to come back home. I want to come back to the palace. I want to come back to you. I want to begin to experience the resurrection life again, Lord Jesus. I don't just want to talk about you. I want to know you. I want to live your life. Father God, as many as are crying out to you from the depth of their soul this morning, as many as need healing, as many as need construction, spiritually and otherwise, Father God, I pray that you will stretch forth your rod, the scepter, the scepter of the king is saying, come and touch it. Father God, I pray that you stretch forth that scepter of mercy to that man, that woman right now, both here and online. Lord, stretch forth that scepter of mercy as they receive it by faith. May their story change even today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. We give you praise. We exalt your name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Courage play. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. And I just want you to just spend a few minutes and talk to God before you leave on your own. I just want you to talk to God. We are done. And if you have to go, you go. But I just feel that you need to reassure yourself that everything is going to be all right because he's risen. Jesus is risen. It doesn't matter where you are, what you've gone through, what you're going through. There is hope. There is hope. This is what Resurrection Sunday says to you. Thank you, Jesus.